Hello designers! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to design a custom shoe using one of the templates you can find in your Canvas assignment description. If you're watching this and you don't have access to that assignment because you're not my student, um, you can go ahead and download one of these templates from the website that I'm linking below. It has a bunch of different PSD templates that you can use for this project. Now let's go ahead and get started. I noticed that uh, each of the layers in the template already came isolated for different parts of the shoe. So you can see that there's no background. Right now the checkerboard pattern, as you guys know, designates invisibility or transparency and there is no background so I'm able to go ahead and design it later. And I can see that each of these individual layers designate some individual part of the shoe. So if I go and start clicking on the little eyeball icon, I can start making each part of the shoe invisible and I can try to focus on one layer at a time. So this is what's called my upper layer and that's the bulk of the shoe. This is the heel tab. I'll just go ahead and um, make this layer invisible so you guys can see what I'm talking about. The heel tab is that area behind the shoe. The tongue is gonna be that area where the laces are and the laces and the toe cap. So I am able to color each individual um, layer within this template very easily. Now I wanna make sure I start with the most obvious part which is gonna be that upper layer for me. They may not all have the same names. It really depends on the template that you are using. So I'm gonna make sure that whenever I go and color this layer, it's the color is not gonna go randomly in any other document. So I need to make sure that I select the layer and I know it's selected because it is um, highlighted in gray but I also want to make sure I make a selection of the content in the layer now doing that is actually easier than it sounds all I have to do is press control um, in my keyboard while I click on the thumbnail for that layer so I'm clicking on the thumbnail for the upper layer and you guys will see that now I have this selection showing up around the content in that layer. This will ensure that when I go and use, uh, let's say, color fill or a brush or whatever, it's not going to go into the background or any other areas where I don't necessarily want that color to go. So I could go and fill this with any color I want, and I can fill it with any brush I want. I can fill it with any pattern I want. For, for now, I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm just going to fill it with some kind of solid color or I might go and use a gradient, whatever I want. So let's actually get started by using uh, a gradient tool because gradients are fun. I'm actually gonna use the gradient tool. I'm gonna make sure I select a two color gradient and I'm going to select right now this purple is one of the colors. I'm just gonna double click on that gradient stop so I can go and change the color to a more pink lilac kind of color is I'm feeling some girly feminine vibes here. So that's going to be the gradient now when I click OK. The selection is still active so then using that uh, gradient tool I can just click and drag and now I filled that part of the shoe with this really beautiful purple to lilac gradient. I'm not done with this part of the shoe. I'm going to be doing a lot to this part of the shoe because now that I filled it with a color, I can go in and use some kind of brush and give it a really interesting design. If you haven't already watched my video where I show you how to upload custom brushes to Photoshop, I will link it below, but it's basically what I did prior to starting this project so I could have a lot of different brushes to use to design this shoe. Now, I selected the brush tool and in the br uh, brush picker in the options bar, I'm just going to close out this general brushes um, folder and look for the folder that I recently downloaded called 20 IV brushes. Now I don't remember what all of these are by heart, so I'm just going to go and drag over my document and kind of get a look at what they look like before I decide which one I want to use to illustrate my shoe. You guys will see I'm just dragging over the actual document and it gives me a little preview 
of that brush. If you don't see the preview, it might be that your brush is just set to a really big size like mine was a moment ago. So you just need to lower the size and kind of get a sense of what it looks like. I think I like this, this particular brush, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to leave it selected and I'm going to change the color to something a little bit lighter. So I think I'm going to go with one of these pinker, light pink, lilac-y colors. Click OK, set the brush to a size that I'm happy with. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because I want to focus on the beautiful kind of uh, leaves in that ivy brush. And I'm going to click and that's all it takes. So that right now is the custom design that I have on the shoe. There's a lot of shoe and very little design so because i'm a little bit of a maximalist i'm going to go and fill it with a few more designs using the exact same technique so right now i still have the same layer selected i can go and change the color if i want to i can go and change the size if i want to but i think what i'm going to do is actually keep filling the shoe with different ivy designs and i'm going to make sure they overlap and you guys will see that because I have that selection, I am not seeing that uh, brush go into the background or any other parts of the shoe. That's why it's really important to have an active selection while you guys are doing this project. You guys can go as minimal or as maximalist as you want. I'm more of a maximalist, so I'm just gonna go and keep filling this shoe with different designs. Okay, that might be a little much. <laughs> Control Alt Z when you don't like it. So I think that looks really beautiful and I'm ready to move on to another part of the shoe. So I'm gonna select Control D to get rid of that selection. And now I wanna do the next part. So this part right here is called the heel tab, which is not really that visible. It's just this little strip behind the shoe. Again, this is gonna be completely different depending on the template you're using so I'm just using this particular shoe and it has that section called heel tab I don't know what template you're using so I'm gonna uh, click control and click on the thumbnail for this layer and I'm just gonna color that layer using my paint bucket tool paint bucket tool is kind of a silly tool it only has one job basically to fill a layer but it does its job fairly well so I think using this exact same tool, I'm gonna to fill also the shoelaces and some other parts of my shoe. So the next part is the tongue. I think I'm just gonna leave the same color and press control to select that layer. Use paint bucket tool with the same color to go and fill each individual part of that selection. Okay, I think that's about it. Then go to the laces. I have to press Control D to get rid of my selection, or you can go to the select menu and deselect, whatever works. And then for the laces, press Control to now fill in that selection for the laces. And I think I'm gonna do a darker purple this time for the laces. Obviously, you guys are gonna select colors that are interesting to you. That's interesting. There's some parts that didn't fully select, but I can go back and fix those later. All right. Now, the next part is the toe cap, which is basically that part where the toes are. And I'm going to go and maybe use the gradient tool again here. So um, hold down control, click on the thumbnail, and then use the tool of your choice. So in this case, I'm just going to use the gradient tool. Okay, I think I'm gonna drag it in a different angle just so I have more of a obvious gradient. Let me actually go and reverse it. Just because again, I'm kind of maximalist and I want it to be really obvious as a gradient there. Okay, I like that, that looks good. Okay, 
the shoe layer that's designated here is basically going to make the shoe look a little bit more realistic. If you guys will notice, so this is like the shoe layer kind of like on its own, right? Um, but then I add this layer called shoe and it just makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So I'm actually going to go and make that visible because I want it to look more um, like a regular shoe that I would pick up from the store. I don't want it to look like a flat drawing. If I missed anything, like I think I did for the tongue, I'm just going to go and maybe select that and just fill it in using my paint bucket tool. Again, you guys can go back and fix any areas that maybe you missed. Okay. Control D to get rid of that selection and that looks fairly finished. That looks like a shoe I would totally go out to buy. So now it's time to design my own background and the background is to make the overall design look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing because I don't want this shoe just to be floating in space. So I'm going to go and click on that background layer, which I titled Design Your Own Background, just to remind me I need to do it. And I'm going to actually start my background design with another gradient, because you guys know I love gradients. And this time I'm actually going to select a slightly different color to complement the shoe. Ye uh, purple's direct complement is actually yellow, so I think I might go with a kind of dark mustardy yellow and see what that looks like I don't need to make a selection because in this case I'm filling in the whole background so click to drag the gradient oh and I'm loving that I'm loving that so hard I think I might actually want to reverse it though because I want the yellow on top yeah I definitely like that very much and now it does feel a little bit empty because again I am a maximalist in most things in my life so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna overlay some of those brushes in the background the same brushes that I was using in the body of the shoe using the same exact same layer I'm just gonna go and use the brush tool and use some of those same ivy brushes let me go and preview that brush there's one in particular I have in mind that's a little bit more circular. So bear with me as I find it. Okay, I actually like this one. So I think I'll use this one. I'll make it a really exceptionally large size. And I'm gonna set it to a color that is kind of like on the light side. And paint. Oh boy, that might be a little bit too big because I couldn't actually see it. So let me go ahead and lower its size just a little bit. Okay, that looks so beautiful. So I think I'm going to continue doing something in the background with that same technique where I just kind of use the brushes in a very, very light color and try to overlay them in the background for just an aesthetically pleasing effect. All right, all things considered, I might have gone a little bit overboard with the brushes, so if I ever feel like I added too much and it's looking a little bit too cluttered with too many brushes, for lack of a better word, I can always just control all Z and go back a few times until I have some breathing room to show off my beautiful custom shoe design. So I'm ready to go ahead and export this um, shoe as a final draft in either JPEG or PNG format. So I can go to File, Export, 
and I'm actually going to go and save for web because I want to go and, and um, share this shoe design to my social media. So I'm going to go to export and save for web and from the export options I'll just select JPEG or PNG 24 whichever one you want to use and go ahead and save it or click done actually if you're done selecting the size and so forth and that pretty much completes this project it's very short it's very fun and I can't wait to see what you guys make peace out